Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the next topic. That is a SEMA force, guys. So in the last lecture, we discussed two sol two process solution, right? Yes. So now let us discuss the solution with respect to SEMA force, guys. Okay. So this topic is really easy, guys. The only thing is you should concentrate and you should practice, guys. So there are few PYQPs. Anyway, we will be solving them, but please try to practice them. If you are having any other questions with respect to this topic, guys. Okay. Yes, because this topic looks really easy. Like by first observation, you will think that yeah, it's really easy. So you will think, but it you will end up with the wrong answers really easily, guys. So that is the reason why I always concentrate while solving these questions. Okay. Yes. So this schema force concept was also given by Dijkastra, guys. Okay. Yes. So what exactly schema force say that says? Uh, so there are two schema force function, and what is exactly schema force, guys? I think most of you have already got that out, right? So I am saying schema force, schema force. What exactly is it? So schema four is a particular integer variable, guys. So its value will be either zero or either one, guys, in traditional ways. Okay. So we will be discussing in this lecture. We'll be discussing mostly only about binary schema four. Binary schema four will be only ranging from zero or one, whereas counting schema four will increase, like zero, one, two, three, four. It will count some things. Okay. Yes. Okay, so in some questions he might specifically say you that the schema four value is a two. So at that time it is not a traditional binary schema four. It is a uh, counting schema four where it can go up to two. Okay, the application will be exactly same, but the only thing is the count will be different, guys. That's it. Okay, yes. So basically schema four is a integer variable. Okay, and its initial value will always be one, guys. And there are two functions with it. One is a weight, and the other is signal. So this is a really simple, guys. And please remember the terminology, guys. So weight is a nothing but with the representation p, and signal is a nothing but with the representation v, guys. Okay. Yes. So w p and s v, s v, s v, s v silk or something. You can remember in that way. S v or Srinivas. So Srinivas, s v is there in Srinivas, right? Yes. So you can remember with his name, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let us start. So what exactly weight does is it is going to decrement by one, guys. Whereas a signal, what it does is it is going to increment by one. So whenever the value is greater than or greater than zero, so greater than zero means whenever the value is one or two or anything, it is going to reduce by one by weight. And when it comes to signal, it is going to increment by one with any case. So the value might be minus thousand. It is going to increment by one. That's it. It doesn't know anything else, right? Yes. So these are the two functions, guys. Okay. Yes. So please remember the terminology. So now I will say you how it helps in solving n process solution, guys. So assume that there are three processes here. Okay. Three processes: process one, process two, process three. Okay. Yes. So now these three processes wants to go inside the same exact critical section. But the only catch here is so we are performing a weight of yes. And before the critical section and signal of yes after the critical section and I clearly told that the value of yes will be one in the initial stages, right? Yes. So if a brown comes initially, the same order let us follow: brown, then blue, and then green. So brown comes and he will start the execution. He will come to weight of yes and he will make it zero. And he will go inside, and he will wait there, and he will say that blue, blue, I am inside. So please, you also come inside. So he will say like that. So what blue will do? Blue will also think that okay, I am also coming. I am also coming. He will come. He will try to come. So once he comes to this wait state, so wait says that so the value is already zero. I cannot decrement any further. Please, please say to brown that to increment the value. So once brown, so now this blue will switch to green. So what green will do? Green will also come and get stuck here. So now what these two guys will do? These two guys will say brown to please leave. We will go inside and we will do our work. You also leave. Leave it will say. So basically this will this will got the this will get the execution chance. So basically it will getting the execution chance, guys. I am saying it will say that will say. Okay. So this will get the execution chance after swapping them in between them also. So at the end the context switch will be given to this brown. So then that brown will execute the signal which increments the value to one and assume that after this brown the green got a chance. So the context switch has been done from. brown to green so now green will go inside so basically it will check so it will again check the signal so now the value is 1 so now the signal will the, now the wait function will say okay okay i am ready to decrement so it will decrement it so now it will go inside and it will enjoy its time so once the whole process is done it will again signal the thing it will become 1 so now again the process 3 will go inside so it will go inside 
it will make it zero it will complete its execution it will come out so in this way here everything is being passed right so there is no issue i think so according to me there is no chance of deadlock there is nothing right yes so this is the concept of a sema force guys okay so most of the students might be thinking that okay so this is the simplest solution this are this is easier than uh, turn those uh, array those all things right yes you are absolutely true because that is the gorgeousness of this particular thing guys okay sema force okay yes so now you got an idea right yes so basically this is sema force uh, will be following a mutual exclusion progress and it will not follow bounded weight guys because uh, when it comes to bounded weight uh, bounded weight so if a process is waiting we should know wh when it will get chance but here where is that situation guys uh, so one uh, program could go inside and it will never get context switched and it will just wait and the outside programs will also wait along with it so that is the reason why there is no chance of a bounded weight here guys got it yes okay so now let us go through the standard problems with respect to sema force guys so there are total three different problems with respect to sema force okay okay so the first problem is a reader writers problem the second problem is a producer consumer problem the third problem is a dining philosopher problem so i think most of the students who have written operating system labs might have heard these three programs right because these are the three uh, interesting programs or the crazy programs in operating system lab right yes okay yes so let us start so what is a reader writer problem guys so assume that you are an owner of a website guys okay you are the owner of a website okay and this is your website okay so if you are working with a website and assume that there are total three members or three partners in your website okay you are the one and he is the other guy he and she is the other girl okay yes so these are the three members okay yes so now what is the thing is and there are n number of audience so we don't know how many audience will be there for a website right yes okay so there are n number of audience so what exactly reader writer problem says is uh, so assume that you want you are running a website right yes so assume that one user is reading the website and he is reading a particular blog or something so at that time can one more user come and read guys so there will be no issue if thousands of readers also visit the same website and read it right yes the server should be capable but there will be no issue right yes so that is the reason why there is no problem with reader reader things but assume in this way so assume that you are updating the website and he also thought that let us update the website and she also thought that let us update the website so you three are working on the same website so at that time if someone publishes the thing the other two will have some confusion like what exactly happened so that those kind of things will be there right because these three guys are changing something sir whereas these n guys are just reading the things they are just seeing the things what are there but these three guys are modifying the things so that is the reason why writer writer are always enemies guys so they cannot never work together and similarly writer reader will also have an issue because if the reader is reading a particular sentence and suddenly the uh, the writer updates that sentence and suddenly you will search i read the word this word like a uh, function but that function word is now where like what am i reading am i in confusion so those kind of things will be coming so that is the reason why writer reader problems will also be there whereas reader reader there could be reader 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 any any number of readers there is no issue right yes so this is the concept of reader writer problem so now what is our goal so our goal is to send as many readers into our website until only readers are coming and once a writer comes no readers are allowed no writers are allowed right yes so that is what we will try to solve using the sema force okay yes so readers only read the data cannot update writers they can read and update the data so the only rules here are so whatever i have discussed they are written in terms of text guys okay so allow multiple readers to read the same, read at the same time only one single writer can access the shared data at same time okay so one reader is reading he can only allow readers not writers only writer is updating he will not allow anyone got it yes so it's a quite easy thing right yes okay so now when it comes to the sema force solution so observe it carefully guys i'm directly going through the solution rather than asking us to brainstorm and think of it right yes okay so here we will be using three things guys so the first thing is a mutex okay and the second one is a write w r t and the third one is a read count so basically whenever a reader comes he will increment this read count and whenever a reader leaves he will 
decrement that read count so that we are keeping the track of how many readers are reading the website right yes so if you recall in some websites they even show the number of visitors right like 91101 like that right yes so they are indirectly counting the number of people who are coming into the website right yes okay so now first of all let us discuss the writer's code so what does the writer do guys so writer will check whether the writer's code is a zero or one so if it is a one he will enter inside and he will do his work smoothly he will do his work smoothly and once the whole work is done he will update it back to one and everything will be smooth and the readers can read and writer new writer can also come right yes and now when it comes to reader part so first reader what it will do is he will going to reduce the mutex value guys observe carefully so i'm going to draw some brackets guys so here mutex is there here mutex is there here mutex is there here mutex is there okay yes so concentrate now so basically what a reader does is so once a particular reader comes inside the website so he is going to he is going to decrement the mutex value guys so okay so let mutex value will become from 1 it will become 0 and he will increment the reader count to 1 and now he will check if reader count double equal to 1 so if reader count is exactly 1 wait writer so he is going to decrement the writer to 0 the reason why he is decrementing the writer is because so once the reader entered inside so can the writer come and update guys no right so that is the reason why he is going to decrement it okay so after that he will signal the mutex so basically once this signal is done he will increment it to one so now he can go into the critical section so critical section is nothing but our website guys okay so he will enjoy there right yes so once if uh, some other user comes so if user number two comes he will again change the mutex to zero he will increment the reader count to two he will check the condition is he the first reader no hence he will directly signal it and he will continue reading so once the reader wants to start leaving so assume that if a writer wants to come he will check the right condition so it is zero he will be in a dead loop right so indirectly he will be in a trap okay yes so assume that now one user wants to leave so he will first uh, update the mutex to zero he will decrease the count if the count is equal to zero he is going to signal the because because if all the readers have been left so indirectly you should give the chance to writer so that is the reason why once the reader count equal to zero you are going to give the signal and once this whole process is done you are going to signal the mutex also because a new user can come inside got it yes so now this this topic this logic seems to be really interesting right yes so you can take any number of cases like five readers are coming inside then a writer tries then two leaders leave again writer tries so in that way you can try multiple cases guys got it yes okay so in examination also we will never we will never be asked to write the code right so that's a major advantage guys so if you understood this how i have explained so if you try a particular code in this way you can decode it right so how exactly it is working so that is what we need to do in gate also so that's an advantage for us right yes so now i hope everyone got a clear idea with reader reader problem right yes so now let us go through the next problem that is a producer consumer problem okay so what is exactly with respect to producer consumer problem is so here we are going to have two characters guys so the first character is producer and the second character is consumer so if you recall i told you that the the sema 4 value can be more also right so here the sema 4 value will be 5 guys okay it is nothing but a counting sema 4 to be clear right yes so what producer does is so he is going to produce the items and he is going to place them in the queue guys so once he places them anytime the consumer can take it and eat it so assume it as a dish by your chef or someone so once it is ready someone can take it and eat it someone can take it and eat it someone can take it and eat it so in that way so basically this is what producer consumer problem is but the only concern here is so assume that the producer produced five items guys okay like the slots all are full assume in that way okay yes so at that time can he produce any more items no so you should maintain something to check it and assume that the slots are completely empty can consumer consume something no that's also the thing which you should concentrate similarly if the consumer if the producer is producing something at the same time the consumer is eating something so there could be some clashes here so that's also thing they should which you should take care and that is the exact code which will be going into the sema 4 so the work with respect to counter so basically assume that there are totally how many slots we are counting so let us go through the example you will get more idea guys okay yes so this is the code for the producer consumer problem guys so what we do here is so we are going to create two variables guys so the first variable e 
which indicates empty guys and f indicates full so in the initial stages the empty slots will be n so all the slots will be empty right yes and the full the data filled slots will be zero so with that understanding once the producer wants to produce sorry once the consumer wants to consume something assume in that way so he wants to consume without producing anything so he wants to consume so he will come inside and he will check the p of f so what is a p guys a p is nothing but a weight right so he is going to perform weight of f so already the f value is zero so nothing will be done so he is going to wait 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 there yes yes that's really good so now the chance will be given to this producer so now the producer will come he will uh, p of e okay so that is nothing but he will perform a weight on e so now this will become n minus 1 right yes and he will produce a particular item okay so he is going inside the semaphore right yes so he is going to inside the semaphore so yes is a semaphore here you can say so s equal to 1 so he is going to append his particular item so he is going to add the item to the buffer okay so once he adds it he is going to give the signal to that particular semaphore which he locked and then he is going to increment this value so in this way he will fill the particular column and in this way he is going these guys are going to eat the products so basically what he will do he will perform a f uh, wait on f so it becomes a zero then he will start the semaphore to zero and then he will pick the item he will eat it and guys i'm i'm saying it he will eat it like i'm just giving you an example yes that's it there is no concept of eating and all those things okay yes so v of yes it he will signal the particular thing which he has waited the semaphores and then he will increment this particular empty slots so now it will become back to n got it yes so it's working really good right so he's producing his eating he's producing his eating in that way so if he wants to produce 100 items continuously no once he reached five products it will stop like n value so if the n value is 5 it will stop at 5 got it yes so this is the concept of a producer consumer problem guys okay so now let us go through the last type of problem okay so mostly this video will also end up at 20 or 25 minutes right yes okay so let it continue what's there in that right yes okay so now moving on to dining philosopher problem guys okay so the third type of problem is a dining philosopher problem so i'll be directly explaining you the problem so basically in this problem we are going to have a table guys and in between we are going to have a rice bowl okay and there are total five different philosophers they say guys so in the book it is given as philosophers you can assume that they, those are your friends so you are the five different friends okay and the thing here is so this is a rice guys you can assume it as noodles or rice or something okay so it's a food item okay and you are having a five different plates and you are not allowed to eat with your hand or you are not allowed to eat with your spoon or any other device you need to eat only with the chopsticks guys so and you also require two chopsticks to eat but you are having only five chopsticks here okay so now what is the issue here guys so can all the people eat at the time no so at max only two people can eat so if this guy is eating so this guy and this guy can never eat guys so any one of these two guys can eat right yes so at max only two guys can eat right yes so this is a problem which we can solve using a sema force okay so the thing which we do here is a okay so the thing which we do here is so we are going to do some kind of a tricks here okay to avoid something guys okay so basically if i add one more extra chopstick what will be the advantage guys so assume that i am giving one extra chopstick anyone can take so at this time three people can eat simultaneously right yes so what is a standard solution for this particular problem okay yes so let us go through the code once but the problem with respect to this code is there could be a chance of deadlock guys so that's the reason why i don't want to discuss it but anyway let us continue so void philosopher void okay so the code so they are think so there are totally three different states i think so thinking eating and yeah only two different states so they could be in thinking states or they could be eating state or hungry yeah three states so the philosopher can be in thinking state hungry state and eating state okay yes so assume that they are thinking and now the the now the ayat philosopher wants to wait guys so he will perform a weight operation on ith thing so assume that the two philosopher wants to do it so he will perform weight on two so it becomes a zero and then he will perform a weight on chopstick i plus one so that is a nothing but a three so he will occupy this chopsticks also so if the, both the chopsticks are available he will get inside but the issue here is so at the end once he once the eating has been completed he will release those chopsticks as well right yes so the issue here is so if everyone collected their own chopsticks so zero eighth guy collected zero eighth chopstick one guy collected one the chopstick fourth guy collected fourth chopsticks so everyone are stuck at this location right so this is the disadvantage with respect to this particular solution guys okay 
so the solution to avoid this deadlock are there are total three solutions i think so yeah only two solutions okay so the two solutions are so whenever so here how many philosophers are there guys so five philosophers are there so one philosopher okay will always take right chopstick first then he will take the left chopstick okay so one philosopher will take right chopstick first then left chopsticks and the other all philosophers will take left chopstick first then right chopstick so the advantage here will be always there will be no chance of deadlock right or you can even take some more criteria so odd philosopher picks first her like her left chopstick then right chopstick so this is more more good right yes so if let us number them so let us number 1 2 3 4 5 so assume that every one of them want to eat guys so odd philosopher picks left chopstick first so left chopstick so this is the left chopstick so odd number so this is one so one will pick this chopstick first then he will pick this chopstick the reason why we are saying this is second number that is even number will pick this because if one wants to eat so he has already picked this so this guy can never pick this thing because he need to pick this first right yes so that is the concept here guys so if you want to want more clarity i can explain you with pens but i don't know how much uh, clarity you will get with uh, with it right so let me try anyway it will take around 2 minutes guys at max i'll be taking more 5 minutes maximum okay so don't worry this is the end of the lecture guys so don't worry okay so i need more two caps okay yes so the assume that these are the five different chopsticks and let me write down the numbers so this is a one okay sorry just give me a second i'll be moving the camera okay one this is a two this is a three this is a four this is a five i think it, with this you will get more clarity on this guys okay so the thing is even odd number will always pick the left chopstick first then the right chopstick so using these two he will eat okay whereas even numbers will pick right chopstick first or anything you can take guys right chopstick first then he will take the left chopstick okay yes so what one will do guys so one he wants to eat so he took this chopstick and he took this chopstick and he started eating so now if two wants to eat he need to pick this chopstick but that chopstick is not even there so he can never pick this chopstick right yes so now assume four wants to eat okay so now what four will do four will pick uh, what his right chopstick so right chopstick first then his left chopstick right yes so now assume that five wants to eat five will take his right chopstick but right chopstick is not there so this is the exact logic using which you can solve this problem guys got it yes so it's a quite interesting thing right yes i am i am also really happy that i was able to explain you with the caps right yes okay okay so odd philosopher picks up the first picks up first her left chopstick then the right chopstick even philosopher will pick up her right chopstick first then the left chopstick so this is a standard solution for dining philosopher problem okay yes so now i hope everyone got a clear idea with respect to this schema force right so we discussed the three different problems i do understand that i also want the videos to be short but these topics i want to cover in a single video guys so that is the reason why the videos are going up to 20 to 25 minutes each like from first video the same thing is continuing guys okay i'll be trying to reduce them okay yes so binary schema 4 the value will be ranging from 0 or 1 that's it whereas counting schema 4 will be minus infinity to infinity if i process can be inside so basically if i processes can be inside okay yes so one more important thing is so it can never go to negative guys i'm really sorry for writing in that way but it can never go to negative it can go at max to zero the reason why i'm saying it can at max go to zero is because if you recall the condition of weight so here we are clearly saying if it is anything less than or equal to zero it is going to struck in this loop only then how can it go to negative guys got it yes so these kind of things could be asked so there could be a question i wrote here minus infinity so if that question has come i could have kept wrong answer so now i understood that it can never be negative value got it yes so now i will remember it so in that way so in that way only you need to practice things guys okay yes so now i hope everyone got a clear idea with respect to this uh, uh, schema 4 concept uh, read read reader writer problem Uh, then we discussed the producer consumer problem then dining philosopher problem right yes so i hope everyone got a clear idea on this so in the next lecture let us continue with the last third method okay where we will be discussing the modified weight and modified signal yes okay so that is nothing but a hardware solution we will be discussing test set and 
disable interrupt okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching like share and subscribe for more awesome videos like this thank you